In the small fictional town of Dukesbury, New Hampshire, Davy Stone is a 33-year-old Jewish alcoholic troublemaker with a long criminal record whose antics have a long earned him the community's animosity. Davy is arrested for refusing to pay his bill at Mr. Chang's Chinese restaurant, attempting to evade arrest, Davy's song, stealing a snowmobile, and d. destroying festive ice sculptures in the process. At Davy's trial, Whitey Duval, a 69-year-old volunteer referee from Davy's former basketball league, intervenes. At Whitey's suggestion, the judge s. Anton says Davy to community service as a referee in training for Whitey's youth basketball league. Under the terms of the community service, if Davy commits a crime before his sentence is completed, he will serve 10 years in prison. The next day, Davy's first game ends in disaster. As Davy causes disruptions and continuously torments an obese player, Whitey then suffers a grand mal seizure, and the game is abruptly halted. Davy forfeiting it to the opposing team for the sole purpose of making said obese player cry. Attempting to calm Davy down, Whitey takes him to the mall, where they meet. At Davy's childhood friend Jennifer Friedman and her son Benjamin, Jennifer is now a divorced, single mother having moved back to her hometown and taking a job at the mall after her former husband Ha. Dee left her for another woman that he met online. Whitey reminds Davy that he lost his chance with Jennifer 21 years earlier, but Davy secretly still has feelings for her. As time progresses, Davy and Whitey's relationship becomes more strained, especially after Whitey threatens Davy that he will notify the judge when Davy shoplifts a peanut brittle. Despite letting him off the hook, Whitey K. keeps to his word and vows to tell the judge if Davy commits another crime. Whitey's various attempts to encourage Davy are met with humiliation and assault, including Davy knocking Whitey into a potter potty. Later, Davy bonds with Benjamin while playing basketball at the community center with two other men, but then the game stops when Davy lets Benjamin cuss at the guys who had lost to them, leading Jennifer to reprimand Benjamin for swearing and scolds Davy for his actions telling him that she doesn't need her son ending up like him. While the two are driving to their respective homes, they sing about their happy childhood together and how much things have changed long ago. When Davy gets home, his trailer is being burned down by one of the men who lost the basketball match to him. Davy runs into the burning trailer to rescue a Hanukkah card from his late parents, then watches the trailer burn down. Whitey opens his home to Davy, who reluctantly accepts, also living Tahir. He is Whitey's diabetic twin sister Eleanor. The Duval household has many complex rules, to which Whitey refers as technical fouls, that's a technical foul. Davy seemingly overcomes them and starts to turn his life around. But Davy's progress in reforming stops short when Whitey recalls what happened two decades ago. En route to one of Davy's basketball games, his parents were tragically killed in a car accident. And Davy learned of their deaths when the police showed up after the basketball game. Devastated by the loss of his loving parents and leaping from foster home to foster home, D. Away spent the next 21 years numbing his pain with alcohol and petty crime and a result he ostracized himself away from Jennifer and his other friends. Uncomfortable with this reminder of his tragic, painful childhood. Davy loses his temper and insults both Whitey and Eleanor which results in Whitey kicking Davy out of his home, much to his relief. Davy spends the rest of the day binge drinking, and that night, he breaks into the closed mall. In his drunken stupor, he imagines the logos of various stores coming to life and confronting him about his inability to grieve for his parents, why? CH they identify as the source of his alcoholism intervention song. He finally opens his parents' Hanukkah card, which contains a heartfelt message praising him for being a good son and asking him to never change the way he is. Davy finally cries and comes to terms with his loss. Just then, two cops arrive to arrest him, but he escapes and boards a bus to New York City. The bus is then forced 
to stop when a single thumbtack in the road punctures all eight rear tires. Reminded of the miracle of Hanneker, Devi walks off the bus, intending to find Whitey and make amends with him. Devi finds Whitey at the All-Star Banquet, an annual town celebration in which one member of the community is recognized for positive contributions to Dukesbury with the Dukesbury All-Star patch, which Whitey has wanted for 35 years. When Whitey is passed over for seemingly the final time with the award being given to the hook-handed Tom Baltazar, he decides to move to Florida and live the rest of his life in anonymity. Feeling like he's no longer wanted. Risking arrest, Davy enters the hall and sings of Whitey's many selfless contributions to Dukesbury throughout his life, causing the town speak. Lure to realize the error of their ways, Bum Biddy. Davy leads them to Whitey, who has gone to the mall with Eleanor to speak to it one more time. The townspeople thank Whitey for his service over the years, and the mayor officially grants him the patch award. All 34 previous recipients of the awards give theirs to Whitey. Davy and Jennifer reconcile and Whitey goes into a seizure, which he calls the happiest seizure of my life.